so this summer we took our autonomous Formula Student race car, now dubbed the DUT 18D, with D standing for just driverless. We took it to two Formula Student competitions in Europe. The first on the list was Formula Student Italy at the end of July, and the second one is by far the biggest Formula Student competition in the entire world, and that of course is Formula Student Germany in the beginning of August. So this video will be about how we fared in Italy, and the next video of course will be about our experiences in Germany. Now, Formula Student Italy was the first ever Formula Student competition I have ever been to. So for me there was a lot to look at and a lot of new things to experience. Now, FS Italy takes place at the Riccardo Paletti circuit, which is a bit southeast of Milan. But before you start making your way over there, there is actually quite a lot that has to be packed first. So aside from the standard camping equipment uh, and obviously the race car, you essentially also take an entire workshop worth of equipment with you. So you gotta be thinking tools, a tool cart, another cart, chargers, soldering equipment, shelves, even more shelves, electronics and much, much more. And once you've got all that packed, uh, you've got about two vans worth of equipment. Now Milan is quite some distance away from the Netherlands, so we decided to split our journey up into two parts. The first night we stayed in Austria, which definitely has some pretty spectacular views if you're driving through it. The second day we drove through a chunk of Italy and then we stopped at our campsite close to the circuit. Now that was the very beginning of the trip. As soon as we got out of our cars we were once again reminded that it was actually summer right now and that we were also in Italy. The entire competition long it was very, very warm. This was during the heat wave, so we had temperatures of over 30 degrees centigrade on most days. Now not only were people having heating issues, especially the drivers who still had to wear their fire retardant suits, but the electronics in a lot of cars, including ours, were running into overheating issues. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so we arrived in an empty grass field, which within a few hours was transformed into a complete cozy campsite, with a lot of teams proudly boasting their flags you know, just in case they forgot where their spot was. So the day after arriving, we were allowed onto the track and we could set up our pit. The pit is your temporary workstation uh, right next to the track. So when you walk by the entire row of these, uh, you can see what the other teams have worked on throughout the year. You can definitely see some different design philosophies and the uh, color scheme preferences. So after setting up your pit, the main focus is on passing scrutineering and uh, doing well at these static events. So scrutineering is where technical experts assess whether or not your car is safe enough to drive on a track. Especially for electric cars, there is a fair amount of things that have to be checked to make sure that the electronics are safely designed. They also perform more crude mechanical tests, such as the tilt test, where they just tilt your car and see whether or not it flips over. And then there is the nerve-wracking rain test. This one is pretty straightforward, um, you just have to see whether or not your electronics short circuit. And finally there is the brake test. Now especially for driverless cars this one is rather important because there's no driver in there. So you want to make sure that this thing actually stops when it decides to veer off course. Now the static events is where your car doesn't actually move. So this is where Formula Student definitely differs from Formula 1. There is a lot more focus put on the actual design of your car. So the first of these static events is the business presentation. This is about how you build a successful business model around driverless Formula Student cars. So our two suited up presenters, Igor and Ivar, they're actually really happy to be suited up in this weather. They came up with Formula AI. This is where drivers take on autonomous Formula cars in a bracket system, or as they put it, the ultimate battle between man and machine. Now the judges were impressed enough by this uh, so that we were allowed into the finals on the big stage. The other two static events look at the car's design and the custom manufacturing methods behind that design. After you pass through the nearing, you can partake in the dynamic events, so obviously this is where your car actually moves. And these events include linear acceleration, where it just accelerates in a straight line, skid pads, where you drive little aids, and it's also about your car's traction. And then a few others where your car drives on a completely unknown track. Especially for the driverless category, your car is completely unaware of what the track looks like. Unfortunately, with our car overheating, we ran into a fair few issues passing the brake test. On a bit of a cooler day, with some actually welcome rain, we were at it for a few hours, and then finally, just before the scrutineers were about to call it quits, we actually passed it. Just in time also, because uh, when we finished it started absolutely pouring down. 
And since we already passed the rain test, we didn't really want to go for round 2 here. With this Trudoneering delay, we did miss most of the dynamic events. So we were there for the last autocross event, but unfortunately we ran into more issues with the car. So as much as it pained us, we couldn't get it to drive a full lap. The Sapienza driverless team, who I think might actually be the only ones in the world that don't run an electric autonomous car, but a gasoline powered one. But aside from having a very stylish car that actually sounds pretty freaking cool since it's gasoline, and they sped down the track really nicely, and they put down a very good time. So uh, props to them, we were impressed. Despite all the issues we ran into, we actually did quite well in Italy. At the war ceremony for the individual events, we got the number one prize for design judging, and then number two for the business presentation. But more importantly, we got the number two overall prize for the driverless category, which is actually very good considering this is the very first driverless competition our team has ever partaken in. Then we also got a bonus Lamborghini award, which, you know, looks pretty cool. It's a, a carbon fiber dinner plate. After this, there was a night of celebration, and then uh, straight in the morning, we had to pack everything back up again and uh, go back to Holland. Because there was still some much needed work to be done on the car, and uh, we only had a few days before we had to pack up again for Germany. But we'll get to that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this little report about uh, how we fared in FS Italy. It was definitely a lot of fun being there. Very warm, but fun. And overall, we're happy with our results there.